Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the winner of the uh, Outstanding uh, Teacher Award, that's uh, Jeff Will. Jeff, welcome. Well, thank you, Stephen. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Well, first of all, congratulations. That's fantastic, isn't it? Thank you so much. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the paper that you've also been recognized about. Certainly. Uh, the paper is Problem-Based Learning for Student Creativity. Right. And uh, we had uh, been given a unique challenge. We were, uh, my colleague and I, Doug Tuga, were faced with a new topic and a new format for our course. And this uh, new format for the course was instead of the standard 50-minute lecture or 75-minute lecture, uh, we had to have a four-hour course on a Tuesday evening uh, taught to busy professionals who had been working all day long. And so we knew, um, even in our 50 and 75 minute lectures, that the standard uh, talk and drone on wasn't right. going to work for this four-hour class. Right. And so we wanted it to be a very active, very participatory type of a class, and so we wanted to go full bore on with problem-based learning and active learning exercises. And we really, uh, we really focused the entire class on how can we really integrate problem-based learning into the whole experience for these uh, students? Right. And the topic was also very germane for it. It was creativity and innovation. So what better way than to put creativity and innovation right. into action by having the students do creative exercises, problem-based learning to um, put into practice the innovative techniques that we were trying to get across in the, in the topics. How did it all go? Well, it went wonderfully. Uh, we thought that it was really important to bring that to a wider audience, and right. so we were careful to assess the things that we uh, were uh, that we were doing in lecture and in the exercises, and so uh, we carefully assessed that and we put it together in a paper, and uh, we received a very good response, and we're happy to share it with the folks here at ASAE. So, what are some of the? I mean, because it seems to me that you know what you talk about is really important. Yes, because, definitely. Because we've all sat through lectures that, uh, frankly, we wished were a little bit shorter. Far uh, too many. Uh -huh. and, and what you're talking about with creativity and innovation is the holy grail to many people of, 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 of uh, you know, business and academia. So, so what are some of the kind of, uh, what are some of the lessons coming out of your paper in a nutshell that you'd like to share? Okay, so one of the things is that uh, it's very hard to teach creativity and right. innovation. And a lot of times people are faced with this idea that, uh, can we teach this? And we have come up with this idea that, well, it may be hard to teach, but it certainly can be learned. Right. And we feel that it can be learned best by putting things into practice. Right. So when you talk about a topic like nominal group technique or maybe Votadot and so forth, you don't want to just teach about it. You don't want to just talk about it. You want to have the students put that into action. Right. And so we don't want to take credit for teaching it, but we did assess and we did um, canvas the students and talk to them about what their experience was. And what we feel that we've shown is that it has been learned. And right. that's more of what we really want to get to the crux of. It's not about what we teach. Right. It's about what the students learn. Okay. What do you think, more generally, looking at the uh, field of uh, education, what do you think some of the challenges that teachers are facing right now? Yeah, especially in engineering education. Right. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that I've been faced with is our rapidly changing technical environment. Right. And so, um, as an engineering educator, it's always been a very difficult thing to stay on top of right. current trends, current state of the technology. Right. But in our world, the um, rate of innovation, the rate of change, the technological advance has been accelerating. Right. And I use the time derivative uh, correctly there. The rate of technological advance is accelerating. Right. And so um, in, in 20 years ago, uh, you'd be obsolete in 10 years. And it feels like today, if you're not staying on top of things, you're obsolete in five years. I know that feeling. Yeah, definitely. And so not only do we as engineering educators need to stay on top of things, right. we need to engender in our students right. this idea that they're going to be obsolete in five years if sure. they don't continually practice continual learning, independent learning, and always be educating themselves. Okay. My well, final question uh, is uh, fantastic being Outstanding Teacher of the Year. If you were giving just a word of advice to some other folks who might you know, want that accolade, what would it be? Well, I think the, the best thing that I ever did as a young uh, engineering educator was to attend the National Effective Teaching Institute, Teaching Institute uh, led by Rebecca Brent and Richard Felder. And that's still going on, and I think that is uh, one of the best things that I ever did. And I would encourage anyone who's interested in engineering education to attend uh, that, uh, that conference. Okay. Jeff, thanks ever so much. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Stephen. Thank you.